Hi friends, we're back again here today. And uh, you may be wondering, it's, it's Wednesday already. It's July 15th, mid-month. I don't know about you, but the time is sure screaming by in some senses and, and in other sense, it's just as slow as a turtle walking through molasses. But here we are nonetheless. When I say here we are, you might be wondering where here is. And uh, so I'll let you know that we're in the prayer room at RLC. You may not even know there is a prayer room. Well, ta-da, there is, and I'm in it. It's behind the sanctuary, behind the altar, and uh, you just come behind the chancel wall area, and uh, it's right next to the choir room that's back here as well. This is another one of my favorite spaces here at RLC. Last week I was in the chapel, this week in here, and the reason for that is because, as you can tell, this is a special set-apart, sanctified sanctuary, as it were, a place to get away from the world around us. There are several prayer groups who meet in here during the week when we're not staying home and staying healthy. And uh, I come in here regularly for prayer as well. And if you're with us, I uh, would encourage you, if, if you're here uh, or when you're back here, to stop by the prayer room, find it, and use it as a place for your special time with the Lord. We're still talking today about being fishers of people. And today we're in the Old Testament in the prophetic book of Daniel. We're in the last chapter of Daniel, chapter 12. So if you'd like to grab your Bible and turn to Daniel chapter 12, we'll be in the first few verses, one through four. Daniel is giving a prophecy of the end times, the, the eschaton, as it were. So this kind of moves from a, a, a purely prophetic, which is truth-telling, really, book, to a, a more now specified version of prophecy known as apocalyptic writing. It's a literary genre, one in which uh, several biblical writers write in this uh, type of, of writing. John writes in Revelation in, apocalyptic, in the apocalyptic genre, easy for me to say. Uh, Daniel does, Isaiah dabbles with that as well, and some of the other prophets. And so Daniel is given this vision by God and is presenting it to the people thousands of years ago, well before Christ, to Israel. But we also hear these words because, well, of course, we are living now closer even than Daniel, even than Jesus, even than anyone who has lived before us to the end of times. And herein, there's a promise, I want you to be listening for this, there's a promise of gift, I guess, gift of grace, a, a, a promise to those who are found faithful of sharing the gospel, of fishing for people. Let's see if you hear it. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. At that time, we know this is at the end of times, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitude, multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightest of heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase their knowledge. Did you pick up on it? It was a little hidden, a little subversive, but there nonetheless. What's this passage about? What is this passage about? Well, Michael, we know the archangel, the 
angel of the people of God is coming back at the end of time. And Daniel prophesies that he will be coming back during a time or just after a time of great distress. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to think maybe this is that time. <laughs> we don't know, of course. We know that in, in uh, the Gospel of Matthew, the 24th chapter, Jesus says, no one knows the time or the hour of the, the end of days, the return of Christ. Not even the Son uh, has that knowledge been revealed to you when he speaks those words. And so when we're talking about the end times, we compare everything against Jesus' words in Matthew 24. So who knows? Who can prophesy if these are the end times? But we're certainly in a time of distress, aren't we? And maybe it's not much different than periods before. But after that time, the people of God will be delivered. And then the great judgment will happen. Those who have fallen asleep, that is, who have died, will be some raised to new life, those who live by faith, and some raised to eternal damnation. But then verse 3, those who are wise will shine like the brightest of heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness. Well, who other is Daniel talking about? God himself here is speaking the words then through Daniel, then those who are fishing for people and have found fruit, who have caught these fish. Well, of course that's who Daniel's talking about. Of course that's who God has in mind here. Those who faithfully proclaim the gospel that others came to know Christ. These, says Daniel at the end of verse 3, will lead, will shine like the stars forever and ever. Hmm. I don't know about you, but thinking about shining for eternity, because I heard the call of God to make disciples, to fish for people, is indeed comforting. It's joyous. It leads me to celebrate. But all the more, and this is where my mind goes, I'm looking forward not to, to my shining as one who shared the gospel of Christ, but to seeing folks in that eternal place called heaven after the end of days that are there because I followed the command to make disciples. What a gift that will be, won't it? Can you imagine that for a moment? Someone you knew in this life, maybe well, maybe not hardly at all, but something you said or something you did led them to come to know Jesus. And so they come to you on that last day, on that day you arrive in the heavenly places. And after you've had your warm welcome by the Father who said to you, well done, good and faithful servant. After you've had that embrace of Jesus and introduction to the Holy Spirit, this person approaches you and says, thank you. If it wasn't for your gospel proclamation, for your fishing, I wouldn't be here. Wow. What a gift that would be. Much better than shining bright as a star forever and ever, in my opinion. What motivates you to fish for people? Let us pray. Lord God, what a gift it will be to see you in glory, to be ourselves resurrected into glory. And what a gift it would be uh, to see a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, 
maybe someone we, we, we just encountered in this life that we don't really know at all, approach us and, and say simply, thanks for fishing for people. For that is how I was caught by Jesus Christ. What a gift, Lord Jesus. Stir us, Lord, to do the hard thing, to be courageous, and to take every opportunity we have to fish that people would know you. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. It's been great to be with you. It's hump day, Wednesday. You can do it. Two more days to the weekend. Love you. Miss you. See you soon. Bye-bye.